Hey guys, it's Charlie here from the Developer Engagement Team. Today I'm going to walk through using the CLI tool to listen to notifications and then I'll talk a little bit about a new experimental feature we have and what experimental features are exactly. <coughs> so as you can see here there's three main steps um, involved when subscribing to our notification service. The first one is to create a new channel and when you do this you'll get a channel ID back and then we can use that channel ID in the next step where we subscribe to one or more topics on that channel and then finally we have to open a WebSocket locally and connect uh, so that we can receive live updates and as you can see I uh, uh, supplied each of the corresponding uh, CLI commands to each step uh, so let's get started so as you can see I have my IDE open here with my CLI at the bottom and this file is uh, requestbody.json this is where I'm storing the topic that I want to subscribe to I'm just going to subscribe to one at the moment the user presence but you can subscribe to multiple and if you want to check out all of the available topics you can run this command here GC notifications available topics list and that will return um, a list of all of them and if you want more description and, and detail on each of them that information is available at the developer center. So let's do the first step here in subscribing to the notifications which is to create the channel. So we just need to run GC notifications channels create and that will return to us our channel ID. So I'm going to copy that and use that in our next step where we subscribe to the topic. So we need to run this command here, GC notifications, channel subscription, subscribe, pass the channel ID, which we just got back, and re our file, requestbody.json. So if we're successful, we should see uh, this response here. And now we just need to do the final step, which is listen on that, well, create our WebSocket, and then listen on that channel. So. I'm just pasting in the channel ID to my command again and I'll copy that over so GC notifications channels listen and then pass in the the channel ID again so our WebSocket is listening now and I'm logged in as this user on my pure cloud so I'm just going to change their presence to busy and as you can see we got the notification there and back to available and there it is so that's working fine uh, you should note every 30 seconds or so the server will send a heartbeat message down to the client and now one has just appeared here if you want to suppress those you can supply this command here uh, hyphen hyphen no heartbeat and that will suppress all heartbeat messages so I just um, made a little Python script here as a bit of a use case to show why the CLI can come in very handy. If you're asked to um, collect, say, the data that I'm collecting right now in, in a program and store it in a SQL database, you would need to, if you're going to do it purely with Python, there's a lot more code involved that you would have to import our notifications API, import our software package, and you would have to manually create the WebSocket. But using the CLI, I can, now this is just a very messy sort of simple example, but I can just listen for input, uh, create the JSON objects out of that, and then just create the SQL database and store and um, insert them into that. So the command that I have written up to do this is the following. Sorry, now one moment. So I'm gonna run the same command as before to listen on the channel, pass the channel ID. I'm gonna suppress the heartbeats 
and then I'm going to pipe the response uh, objects to this Python script. Now if I go update the user's presence again a few times and close this program I should be able to check in the uh, database I just created and I'll run the query on that to get everything so as you can see now all those um, all, the, all that information is stored in the database so that's just a small example of how you can save some time with the CLI. So now the last thing I'm going to cover is a new experimental feature called alternative formats. And experimental features basically allow us to get new ideas out there early so we can get feedback uh, before they're finalized and work out any any kinks. Uh, if I, if you want to take a look at what experimental features are available, you can say GC experimental, experimental list. And as you can see, there's just two at the moment, and they're both disabled, which means if we run their associated command or flag, it, it won't be uh, recognized. You need to enable them. So I'll do that now for alternative formats, and I'll run GC experimental enable, and then pass the name. And now if I check, you can see that's enabled. So what this feature lets us do is specify our prefer preferred data format. So if I want my response from a API call to come back in YAML, then I just need to pass this flag to make that happen. So again, I listen on our channel for notifications and I'll specify that I want the output format in YAML. Dash hyphen hyphen output format equals YAML. And now I'll have to make a change again on the user's profile. So now we can see that's back. And similarly, we can specify what data format we want to um, send our input in. So I'll go back to where I passed in this request body with our topics and I will just specify that the input format this time should be YAML and I'll also have to pass the, the YAML file and that worked fine. So I already had a request body.yaml ready to go here. It's basically it's the exact same thing. So uh, that's it for this video. If you have any questions or suggestions uh, to do with our CLI, then check out the developer form, which is in the bio. But that's it for today, so thank you.